and assalamu alaikum everyone how is everybody i hope everybody is doing good um whenever i see something whenever i learn something that uh, i feel that my members and mothers parents out there can benefit out of it so either i sit down i write about it or i make a video so i am making a video today this video is going to be about uh, how what's first to understand what's the difference between a meltdown and a tantrum and then how you can help your child firstly i think uh, and i am making this video more from a mother side as a parent not as a professional not as a psychologist because no matter how much i have studied in theory when it was happening in there in real life i was blank i was completely clueless at that moment i was just a mother and whenever like few days back my son had a severe meltdown and with my son i he doesn't he doesn't have meltdowns often so i'm i wasn't that um, like very uh, effective in those situations because it it, it doesn't happen much so my son was having a severe meltdown he was crying he was trying to hit himself he was um, sweating he was furious he was uh, he was completely all over the place and uh, at that moment as a mother the struggle was that i was completely helpless and uh, being in that state that you are there your son is in front of you your child is in front of you and still you're not able to do anything for them that feeling is traumatizing it was very traumatizing for me it is always very traumatizing because first a you are seeing your child in a very bad condition b you're not able to do anything about it so after many trial and error as i say that i think parenting is something that is very trial and error based and whatever i whatever i learned i do want to share it with my members that um, first i think the mistakes that parents do is not to able to differentiate between is your child having a tantrum or is your child having a meltdown because maybe by looking they look quite similar if a child is in between a meltdown or a tantrum but dealing with both of them is very different and i think when you understand the difference it will be easier for you to handle the situation so first of all i think the basic difference if i start with is that uh, in between uh, between tantrum and uh, meltdown is that tantrum is for a particular thing the child wants to get something in return they want the audience they want to get in return and in meltdown the child even if you give them what they want they will still carry on with their behavior because even at that time they don't even know what they want so even if you apply all the kind of calming strategies with a child it won't work because they are confused and there is and what why meltdowns occur is because of the overwhelming of the emotions sensory overload what you can do is that you need to understand first that what's the difference so that you can deal it with differently uh with the tantrum you can either challenge the child in a in a positive way not like that you're not you're actually increasing the behavior you can actually for instance if the child is demanding to play with a toy and you want them to do something you need to ask them to do and then you will tell them that they will get the toy or that object in return so they will learn that okay if they are not going to get out of the situation just by throwing tantrums but on the other hand with the meltdown you can't do that with your child sometimes i have seen parents screaming at, at their child because they thought that it's a tantrum they are just misbehaving but actually child was having a meltdown just put yourself in a situation in which you are overwhelmed you are completely uh, like uh, you have too much to take in you're emotionally overburdened but because you are verbal you are expressive you can express a child being non verbal doesn't understand emotion you can you can't even imagine how frustrating it would be for that child so what do you want to do when you are feeling that way you want to be calm you want to be isolated you want to do something 
that will help you process that emotion not just what we do is that we make our child not to process it we we want our child just to be calm again and not do anything and not cry i think that was a mistake i was doing as well what i did was the first thing that i've started doing is that i have first let my child allow him allow my child to feel that way it's it's completely uh, soul crushing it is trust me when my if, if i if my child is having a meltdown letting them feel this way is the hardest thing to do it is it's always it it's always like that even if you are 100% prepared with that even when it's happening then and there letting them feel this way is very difficult but you need to they need to process this because no matter what you try to do they will actually get more frustrated from your end as a parent what you can do is first as i said allow them to process that but ensure safety if they are hitting themselves don't allow them to hit themselves ensure safety ensure that you, they are in an environment that even if they are trying to hit hit their hands on the floor or on the wall they are, are around people you have gathered people from your family asking them to help you out with it take them to a place where there are less objects so that it's less dangerous for the child um develop a calming routine because when you learn with time because every child has a different uh, you know every child is different so one formula can't work for everyone so ensure that you are giving a calm environment turns off the light if the sensory lights work for your child uh, just turn off the lights put the sensory lights on give them something to play with if they have tactile issues just hand them over something that uh, for instance i'll tell you a very easy way what i did was that uh, i uh, you know those physiotherapy kind of gel bags that you can freeze it and you can warm it as well my son loves playing with it i gave them that i gave him that he started playing with it it was cold it was you know it's so uh, different objects that he can squeeze he can uh, you know uh, even if he puts in his mouth it's not going to be dangerous so g- give things like that to your child be there and sh- make sure that they know you you are present but don't push them for anything don't uh, ask them to stop crying don't try to touch or grab them much just be there they should know that you are there make them feel your presence that's very important and while doing that the hardest thing for me is when my child is crying screaming i should not do that it's very difficult but be there calm when you are calm you are going to transfer your energy into your child and it works i'm not saying that just by the by reading a book i tried that it's very difficult you will need practice but you need to stay calm in front of your child at that moment so that your child can observe that calmness from you and can get the calmness so i think and then when you are absolutely when your child is calm and uh, the situ- the situation is getting normal and so what you do is that afterwards when you are when your child is safe when your child is okay sit properly and think about the pattern what could have been the trigger sometimes you don't even know and it happens again and again then you realize okay this was something that happened that during the day that might have been the trigger so look for the trigger make the pattern write down the pattern that what happened exactly in that day and then match that were there any similar things in those days that might have triggered then try to change it when you try to change it you see that your child is much calmer he is happier they are more sick they feel more secure and when they feel more secure the meltdowns the uh, threshold of the meltdown the frequency of the meltdown will decrease so when you and and when you make out that pattern and when you identify some triggers in your environment discuss it with the therapist let them know okay this is what is happening can i do something about it how can i do something because when you'll have a professional input into it it will be easier for you it, it even it, it will be easier for the therapist because then they will be aware ki okay your child might get is getting triggered because of certain stimuli in the environment so i think um 
this is how you can benefit your child and this is how i have learned as a mother again no matter how many times i have practiced i am completely you know i think i have to start from the scratch when it happens and uh, i just want to give love to all the mothers all the parents out there who are handling this on daily basis i have so much love for you i have so much i am i just can't even tell you i hats off to you all hats off but do understand that your child is not having a meltdown because they want it they are having it because you can't even imagine what's going inside them we need to be more empathetic in that situation when your child is screaming and angry of course your reaction can be the similar way but don't do that they don't deserve that at the moment because they're already there's too much going on uh, emotionally they're already overwhelmed they are already overloaded with the sensory input going on uh, and you may don't even know because you are not processing these stimulus around you the way they are so understand that understand the difference deal it with differently gain your the trust from your child make this bad experiences a way to strengthen your relationship with your child let them know that you are understanding them let them know that you are there even if in their worst uh, states you are there and you will love them you will love them more every single day this is what they want this is what they need and if you will react to their meltdowns it will increase it will have a very bad impact on your child yourself and your relationship with the child so this is what i wanted to sit down and talk to you all about because um, i just want to say that it's not easy it's it's never easy but in the end if your child is able to smile because of you i think that's what we need that's exactly what we need because uh with with parents who have child children who are non verbal it's even difficult for them because no matter if the child is verbal or non verbal if they are having a meltdown they are having sensory overload even if they can talk a little bit they can express it will be difficult for them to express in during a meltdown so just stay calm practice that calmness in you bring that calmness in yourself and it will show in your child as well so no matter how soul crushing it might be how helpless you feel at that moment just imagine that your child is going through way more emotionally than you are so just be there be empathetic love them unconditionally and let them know that uh, they are perfect as they are that's it that's i think that is what as parents we can give to them so yeah that's about it i think this is what i wanted to share and if you want any other guidance any other help me and my team are here to support you please let us know i have so many messages in my inbox regarding tantrums and meltdowns so i can understand that uh, it's something that everyone and trust me people feel that i am a psychologist so it must be so easy for me no it's not i'm in the end just a mother with maybe a little bit more knowledge and experience but again as i said when i am in that situation i am blank i am just a mother so i just wanted to make this video and reach out to you all as a mother so please let us know keep that questions coming in and i am and me and my team will help you in any way every way possible thank you so much take care lots of love to your children and stay healthy stay happy take care of yourselves and uh, be positive